What's going on everyone? True Techno Gamer here. So finally ready to give uh, a quick um, walkthrough of my home theater as it is, uh, as it stands currently September 2021. So I've done a lot of work on it since January of this year. Um, I've been in this house for just about three years, coming up on three years now. And for the most part, it was kids play area, this space. I had the bare minimum uh, for the home theater area, but um, finally, over the past you know seven months or so, been able to kind of um, flesh out the room a bit and kind of flesh out some of the equipment I have down there. So um, I did do a quick video um, around January what the home theater looked like, and uh, I may share at least an image of it um, as part of this video just to show kind of the before and after. This is what we're starting. I didn't with, want so. to. Help. It's coming down here to the basement. You see, I already have one surround on the wall here. So, <clears throat> quick immediate note. Right now, this is a pretty big basement. Um, you see how it's kind of laid out. And there's a lot of toys for my kids. Um, you know, so this isn't quite the man cave quite yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, my kids are, are young. They're three and five now. When we moved in here, they were one. Well, my son wasn't even quite one, but basically about one and three. So, you know, wanted to give them space to just roam around and um, be able to play with some stuff and enjoy some things. You know, we've been here for over a little bit over two years now. And uh, but the idea now is that we should start migrating this more to a recreational space slash home theater space, you know, for adults as well. So, again, we'll see the transformation. Some of this stuff will get cleared out and we'll get some other other stuff in here. But for now, uh, here's what I'm working with in terms of like my home theater space um and you know yeah just remember this is pretty pretty bare bones right now um but um i didn't want to publish in that video though because yeah the things just didn't look quite right <laughs> it wasn't very clean it wasn't well kept and i just thought it'd be better to show things as i was in a process of changing making some changes to it so that's what we're about to see now and, and then you can see the before and after but let's get into it so coming down the steps here i have some you know just some movie panels that i got online um just to kind of set the mood a bit and kind of add a little bit of decoration and then there you see one surround speaker and here we are so this is um this is a basement um you know space and i'm it's basically a rec space that i'm kind of using for the theater uh, I don't have a dedicated theater room. Um, part of that is intentional. Um, I probably could do it if I really, really wanted to in, in this house, but um, at least for now, uh, it's not high on my to-do list. So we'll walk through it. Um, again, this space was pretty much entirely kids' play zone. There was a lot more toys down here. You still see that there's some back there. Um, they're getting older, but they're still playing. So over the next year, um, I probably will show like by next year, this back side here would be much more of an adult rec space, pool table, you know, um, bar table, chairs, stuff like that, popcorn machine. Um, you know, I want to get one of those old school uh, arcade machines, either the one up ones or maybe a custom one that I can build or something. But you get the idea. Over the next year, we'll, we'll flesh that out. Um, but for now, um, things are coming along. So let me start by just kind of talking about, I guess, not before I get into like the specific equipment and audio and stuff, but just the room itself. Um, if, if you've seen that before and after, there was literally nothing on the walls before. Um, I didn't have the Atmos speakers up there um, at all. Um, I didn't have the rear surrounds that are back there now, as you kind of can see. Um, didn't have these uh, home theater seats either. And yeah, just kind of rearranged certain things. So it helped a lot just kind of make the room feel a lot more fleshed out. Um, so done quite a bit. This is the first time that I've ever had uh, some kind of room treatments. Um, so you see these acoustic panels around this part. Of course, if you notice, this room in general is, again, it's not like anywhere near an ideal home theater room just from a dimension and shape standpoint. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not it's a bunch of open spaces. Like I don't have a corner over there. I technically don't have a, a much of a corner on this side here. Things are open to the stairwell here. And then there's this whole big open space back here as well, 
where sound can travel. The distance between the seats and the back wall is, is pretty large. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's, it's like half, it's more than half of the room actually. So things are not ideal, but I'm making it work and it's coming together and it sounds awesome. Um, you know, obviously got the, the Atmos speakers and the height speakers kind of here and, you know, just still have some floor space. We do a lot of like karaoke and just, just dance with the kids and stuff like that. So we have some floor space here. Got the theater lights going. So things are coming along pretty well overall. And those speakers are really, you know, far, but I've, you know, run my processor EQ and, you know, the, try to make those a little bit hotter, of course. Um, but th those speakers, I'll talk a little bit more about them, are, are still pretty awesome and how wide they disperse sound. So you definitely can still hear it. And it fills up the backspace pretty well um, still. So with that said, um, I guess let me talk a little bit more about the specific equipment that I have in here. Um, so let's start with these babies. This was one of the, the biggest purchases I got this year, something I've been building up to for a while. Um, so these are the Valencia Tuscany uh, home theater seats in row of four. Um, I kind of went back and forth on that I want to get a row of five. You know, um, I didn't want to go through the process of trying to get a double row here. Um, it's technically possible, of course. It kind of makes things awkward because they'll be behind this, this like this dip in the ceiling here is the HVAC. So, um, yeah, it, it just wasn't worth it. But it's four of us primarily in the family. You know, have some guests. I'm gonna get have some more sh seating options for if I have a larger crowd, which I haven't really had yet um, here. Um, but you know, there's a sofa over here that was kind of like the primary sofa. Um, has some cup holders and such as well. Um, but yeah, you know, I will get more seating, but this, these seats are awesome. Um, highly regarded, pretty good value. Um, they have pretty much everything you can want in, in a chair now. They're supreme uh, Napa leather. Um, I think they're 11,000 or I forget now. <laughs> it's been a while, sorry. Um, I could put it in, the, in the, I'll put a link to the to the website in the, in the video description here, but um, they're really, really high grade um, Napa leather super comfortable. Um, they have power adjustable headrests and lumbar um, for your back. Um, again, they got the lights. Um, each seat has a USB charger, you know, which is just for convenience sake. Um, and it's a full recline of, you know, the back and the legs. Um, pretty, pretty awesome. I'm really glad I, I, I have them. Um, definitely helps set the mood uh, for the theater. And uh, again, a couple of posters near and dear to me and my family's heart here, Black Panther and Rocky. Um, anyone that knows me knows Rocky's like one of my favorites. And um, these acoustic panels are just um, some suede uh, acoustic foam panels that I just got from Acoustomatics. I think it's Acoustomatics.com. Um, and yeah, these are the two by four um, feet. Um, so 24 by 48 inches um, here and some skinnier ones. These are the, the four by ones on the size of the TV here and kind of the front wall one over here and then another two by four there. Um, this is, you know, still pretty early. These, this is actually the last thing I got, the most recent edition for the theater, uh, these acoustic panels. Again, new to, for me. Um, I'm never going down this path. And again, in this room is pretty weird. Like, for example, um, I know a lot of times they say, you know, you want to treat, try to treat the rear. But in this particular case, the rear is so far back from the front. Um, most sound, uh, except for bass, like really low in bass, it's not even going to reach back there, reflect off a wall, and then reach back to the seat <laughs> here. So most of that, you know, reflections, it's not coming from the back wall from where I'm sitting here. Um, so it just wasn't worth it, you know. And, um, you know, if I really got some, you know, recommendations or thought it would be worth it. I still can do that at some point, but you know, for now, I think it's fine. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could go crazy. I thought about putting some like on, you know, the wall that's exposed there and, and kind of putting it next to the surrounds. But again, kind of, you know, it's not really <laughs> very valuable. Most of what you want to do the room cheap before is for the front stage, mainly for like the L and R in the center. Um, get the first reflection points, which I'm trying to hit. So that's kind of that first panel there. And this panel here kind of hits the second reflection points and particularly from this speaker here. And then this one, I hit the first reflection points from this speaker here. So that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. The only other thing I can do here in theory is put some on the ceilings. I may still get some reflection from that, but 
Um, I don't think it's necessary. My wife is not really, you know, I don't think she's ready for that. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. But anyway, um, you know, I think I have noticed a little bit of a difference in just like the dialogue clarity um, and just like the vocal clarity. Um, it's something that it's pretty subtle. Like I'm, I was listening for it. I did, I, I did notice it, but it's something that once your brain adjusts to it, it's hard to discern. But, uh, you know, it, it's there. It's also kind of also some decorative, you know, but again, the walls are just really empty. These ceilings down here are, you know, uh, eight foot ceilings or nine foot ceilings. Eight or not, I can't remember, but they're pretty tall ceiling for a basement. So it just, you know, the room just felt really, really empty with all of this wall space and a lot of it was empty. So um, Michael Jackson, five heartbeats near and dear to my wife's heart um, and flanked and flanking with the... Uh, there's some rare surrounds there. So um, a lot more ambience in the room now. So that's pretty cool. Rest in peace, Aaliyah, one of my favorite artists ever. Um, so that's that. Uh, just some other little things. Got the little Dolby Atmos uh, feature sign up there. Um, have a welcome welcome to Thomas Family Home Theater sign there. Just some little pieces of, of ambience to just add a little, little bit extra to the room here. Um, so yeah, that's essentially that. Now let's talk about the equipment, starting with the obvious things, uh, the speakers. So my speaker system is, um, the Paradigm Studio Reference version four speakers. These speakers, I actually got them back in 2008. I want to say they came out probably around 2016. Oh, sorry. 2006 <laughs> so um they go way back i've had them now just like 13 years i've uh, you know they're kind of the oldest part of my system right now the speakers should be you know they can do that if they're if they're good um they, they, they serve I mean, these are the 100s studio 100s in the front um that's the cc690 um which is the big boy um it's a huge speaker you probably it looks a lot bigger in person trust me it looks on the camera it's a really big center speaker um so yeah, I mean these are certainly well. Um, I think they're a nice balanced speaker of between home theater and music. Um, they're not going to give you like the true high end audiophile type sound for music, um, but they sound really good, and they you know they also sound really good for home theater. Um, yeah, I've had these speakers now, like I said, for over a decade. They serve me well, um, but they're the oldest part of my system. And you know, in terms of equipment, they're. Um, you know, probably the next thing I will look to upgrade and hopefully get to what I call the end game, my end game speakers. Speakers don't have to change too often. Technology doesn't really change too often. If you like the sound, you know, you can keep them for 20 years, right? Or more. I mean, however long they last. Um, so yeah, just wanted to take a closer look at these Paradigm Reference Studio series. Here's the 100 Towers. This was the flagship, the biggest tower in here. And I always love the look without the without the grills on, man. The the drivers, it just kind of looks imposing. It looks like it's something. It looks like some thought was put into it for sure. It's engineering. Um, see the gold anodized uh, aluminum tweeter in the top there. There's the uh, seven inch uh, mid range with the uh, gold anodized face plug. And then in each speaker, we got three seven inch woofers. So six woofers between both of them. Um, I think they're rated to go down into about the mid 40s uh, hertz range. Um, pretty good. Um, pretty good. Pretty good output down there. Um, but yeah, these are pretty serious, serious speakers. And then here's that serious center channel. Even more drivers <laughs> than, the, than the tower. It's four feet wide. You know, if you stood it up, it would be four feet tall. Almost as big as the tower. Seriously. Um, it's a three and a half way because it has a mid range, as you see, it has the one inch tweeter. I think it's a three inch mid range, and then two seven inch like mid woofers. Kind of they kind of double as mid range slash woofers, and then two seven inch dedicated woofers, all for the center channel. Uh, so, so yeah, it actually can go down almost as deep as the towers here. And, you know, has a lot of output as well. So just wanted to get a closer look at these speakers. You know, like I said, I've had them for a while, but um, they serve me really well. Paradigm, I love Paradigm. They do. I love Paradigm because they, they are great in terms of being a nice balance between music and, and home theater. You know, um, you can do out their line. You can find great speakers for everything you want. You know, whether it's just a, a monitor speaker to, you know, a nice like home theater speaker with like high uh, sensitivity and lots of output. 
And then if you really want to go high end and have like some world class audiophile music speakers, you can do that. They have that as well. So I love the balance. I love the engineering that goes into them. You know, serious stuff. So there you go. Just wanted to get a closer look at these babies. But, um, yeah, it's pretty good. So uh, for the surrounds, you probably saw these are also Paradigm. This is Paradigm Prestige um, 25S, 25S surrounds. What was cool about these is these came out with the Prestige line um, that was much later in the studio. It actually replaced the studio. Um, but these were the first uh, surrounds that Paradigm made that actually were bipole speakers. Previously, Paradigm had always had dipole speakers. For those that don't know, quickly, um, basically, if you look, these speakers essentially have two sets of drivers in one, right? They have one woofer and then two sets of tweeters and mid ranges. So it's kind of like two speakers facing outward. The idea there is to give you a much wider um, dispersion of sound um, to kind of emulate the, the the movie theaters that have an array of speakers along the wall, right? So you kind of can have these speakers shooting off in the front and in the back and reflecting sound from the front stage and the backstage. And, you know, you just hear a lot more of a wider set of sound and getting more ambiance with your surround effects. Um, dipole speakers are out of phase, so they do that. But when they do, they create a null that's right in front of the speaker, like kind of where I'm at right now. So if you, if I was standing here with a dipole speaker, you would literally hear no sound coming directly at you. You will only hear sound being dispersed. And that was cool. Um, Paradigm, I had the older Paradigm, I think the 80P 590s or whatever that came with the studio line. Um, and they were cool, but you know, you miss a lot of the directionality, which nowadays with Dolby Atmos and, you know, True HD and whatever, you know, there's a lot of specific sound that come from the surround. So with Dipo, you don't get that um, directionality. There's sometimes where there is something that literally needs to get placed in that location relative to your ear. And dipole speakers are not doing that. They're literally dispersing the sound, um, trying to delocalize it. So kind of defeats the purpose. So the, this is the only bipole speaker that Paradigm made. And, and it's funny, I think this might be the last because it seems like every company now is going pure monopole, which is bookshelf style, right? Um, just front facing speakers for the, even your surrounds. I've always kind of had bipole dipole speakers for surrounds. I like them because I usually have my system in a relatively large space, including this one. So I just like the idea of filling this space with sound, which these do a really, really good job of. If I had a bookshelf speaker, it would not do that. You know, it would be focusing more on the listening area, sure, but it wouldn't fill the room with sound. You know, and as a rec room, you know, we're down here, not always sitting in, even sitting in these chairs, right? It just kind of is cool to just have sound like all around. Um, but having them be bipole, um, make some work serviceably for like Atmos and such because you do get the direct sound coming directly straight at you as well and you just get a wider version of it so anyway these speakers are awesome um, these are definitely the best around speakers I've had um, I highly recommend them if you have Paradigm or you know and just in general they're not cheap um, again <laughs> they're like the highest I think the most expensive surround they Paradigm has some other surrounds too but these are the higher end ones um, but I love them. I've had them now for, I had one pair for, um, three years, I think. Um, and then I just this year got the second matching pair to put in the back. So, um, 25S, Paradigm Prestige, awesome. And then for my Atmos surrounds, um, I have the SVS elevation speakers. Um, most of you guys probably heard of that if you follow home theater at all. Um, these are really cool, versatile speakers, very affordable. So, you know, they're pretty easy. You can place them anywhere and they have ceiling mounts um, that you can get with them. That makes it really easy to mount on the ceiling. So, um, you know, I like them for what they do in Atmos. Um, you know, it's done well. So I have uh, a dot four, two in the back, kind of two in the front. Um, so get the full effect, effect there going. Uh, so let me talk about this TV real quick. So this baby, uh, is the 77 inch LG C8 OLED. It's a 2018 model. So I got it right when I moved in here. Um, it still serves fine. I mean, t TV technology has actually stagnated quite a bit. Um, the picture quality upstairs, I have the E6 OLED, which is a 2016 model and the picture quality still matches, you know, the current ones. Honestly, the only difference now is a lot of the features, the gaming features, HDMI 2.1. And of course they keep increasing the processor to make it faster and such like, but it really isn't a grand difference. OLED is OLED. It's still awesome. So this TV is still awesome. Um, and 
so yeah um you know 77 inches this was like the biggest oled it was the dream biggest tv i've had um from this viewing distance uh it, it definitely gives a good a cinematic effect um yeah i mean I'm, I'm pretty pretty solid with that um 4k of course um all the formats of hdr is supported i'm only missing hdmi 2.1 which isn't a huge deal right now but um that would be the next tv whenever that comes later years later from now um so yeah that's the tv um and of course i talked about these the subwoofers um are the sbs sb16 ultras it's the largest sealed uh subwoofer the sbs makes um these I, I i love them overall um they have a nice cool app that you can use to control them i love the look and the aesthetic of them um you know 1500 watts rms um 5000 watt peaks for each one <laughs> you know so having two um these these definitely can get the job done and shake the house uh sealed subwoofers are a little bit different you know than ported you don't necessarily get that pants flapping effect um at least i haven't gotten that yet and it's it's one of those things that I'm, I honestly still feel like I need to dial in my subwoofers in this space. You know, like I hear the bass, you know, it's very sensitive. Like I could turn the bass up like 3 dB um, and it's going to make a big difference from me being able to hear bass in some cases and not in others. But they integrate pretty well. Um, and for the right tracks, you know, for this space, it, it fills it in. Again, I don't push them that hard, but, you know, everything is there. So dual subs was also one of those things on my like you know bucket list to do and um you know i've had, been running these now for three years um so very satisfied with them definitely a good look all right let's get a closer look into the equipment so by the way this uh av stand uh, which i love i love the look i love how it's see-through and ir um pass through for your remotes and such um but this is the salamander design um oslo um the black um, it's a three by three, um, so it's nine uh, shelves, and yeah, this is th this was like one of the first things I got when I moved in here because I just needed some place to put my equipment and also be able to grow into. I didn't have a lot, like I didn't have some of the amplifiers here and stuff like that. But um, this is you know solid construction. It has vent vent venting for um, airflow uh, inside with the components. It's it's awesome, pretty good, like it. Great purchase, great brand. Um, so anyway, let's look at some of the equipment on this side. We have from top to bottom on the top. There is uh, man. This is sentimental dear to my heart. This is the last Oppo blue ultra HD Blu-ray player that they ever made. Oppo got out of the business of building Blu-ray players, apparently, and they have been dominating the business for a while in terms of making just the best, you know, uh, audio video players out there. And then they decided to stop. Um, so this is like the last player. They had a 203 and a 205. So this is the 205. Um, I had a 103. I still have the 103 upstairs. I've never had an 05. 05 is basically just more about the audio quality. They have a, like a really high-end audio DAC in there. Um, and it's great. I take advantage of it. The only thing this player lacks is like any streaming app. So like Spotify, Tidal. It doesn't have anything built in. Uh, it's, a, it's a universal CD player, disc player. So it can play Blu-ray and CD, DVD, Super Audio CD, DVD Audio, all of that good stuff if, if you still have discs, which I still do. And I love popping in some stuff and listening to it. And I play it out, analog out, to listen to it on these DACs, which sound better than my processor DACs. I'll show you in a minute. But it's awesome. You know, obviously for the video, Ultra HD video looks great. The up sampling looks great as well. Like watching a regular Blu-ray, looks pretty darn close to 4k like it was one of the first things that tripped me out i'll put a blu-ray in there like wait it, is that 4k you know it really looks like really really close um and that's it looks closer than i've ever seen from another disc player so that's that's clearly a testament to the quality there so oppo uh udp 205 beneath that is also one of the most recent additions here once i finally got the atmos speakers installed in the ceiling um, i had to get an extra amp to power it so this is the outlaw model 5000 x you can see um it's a five channel so all this is these four of these channels are being used right now to power my height speakers um i don't foresee myself really going beyond 11 channels anytime soon at least not in this space so uh, i think i'm good for now but um yeah i only use it for the atmos speakers um you know i can't i haven't really done a deep evaluation of that but it it sounds great from what i can tell 
Um, and again, good, great value, you know, for what for what you get. Um, balanced output was something I, I wanted as well, so that's cool. And on the bottom here is the Parasound Halo A52 Plus five channel surround um, process, uh, amplifier, five channel amplifier. So uh, Parasound is kind of my amplifier brand right now. And these are essentially are powering um, the center speaker and then the four main surround speakers, right? So that's the five channels for that. And again, it sounds great. Plenty of power for that. Um, I think this is 180 watts times five, all channels driven. Um, you know, power sound, again, great bang for the buck, great value for, for, for a home theater. Um, just gets the job done for sure. So opening open in this side, that's just an empty um, shelf right now. Give me some room to kind of grow into if I need to. Got some games there, but um, that's pretty much what that is. On the middle here is the Panamax uh, MR5100. Sorry, Panamax MR5100. Um, this is the power conditioner. So everything is connected into here. It's the surge protector slash power uh, conditioner cleaner. Make sure everything gets nice, clean power. Uh, and then down here is the brain. This is the Marantz um, AV8802A, um, the one that had the update for the HMI 2.0 um, 2.0A um, chip. So this is um, this was like one of the first like really um, really really highly regarded Dolby Atmos processors. Um, this thing came out back in like I want to say 2013 or so, 2013 14 somewhere around there. I got it in 2015 I believe. So I've had it for a while. It's been a centerpiece. Great sound quality. I mean, this is not a cheap <laughs> thing either. It's a pretty high-end processor. Um, I've worked my way up. Um, but yeah, it is several years old now. And honestly, a, not much has changed. And not much. There's only one model that Marantz came out with since this one. And all it really does is add two additional channels to 13 instead of 11, which again, I, I don't necessarily need. Um, they did do some changing with the streaming platform and whatever, but um, this still serves me well. Sounds great. Handles Atmos, DTS X, all that good stuff pretty well. Um, so um, not complaining there, um, but gets the job done. And then over here is kind of gaming area for the most part. So I got the PS5 on the top there. Um, I still have a PS3 <laughs> in the middle. You might be wondering where's the PS4. Um, I actually sold the PS4 to get the PS5. Um, the PS5 is backwards compatible with the PS4, right? So it plays all PS4 games. So it's kind of redundant to have a PS4 with the PS5, right? It doesn't play PS3 games, though. And there are still some games on the PS3 that never came out on PS4 or later. Um, mostly use the PS3, honestly, for several, like, karaoke-type games that my family still loves to play. And I kind of whip out when I have company or such. Um, so that's kind of why that's still there. <laughs> but, yep, uh, you know, may pass it along to the kids or something. But, yeah, that's the PlayStation land. And then on the bottom here is the big boy. This is the Parasound Halo A21, the original one. Um, it's a 250 watt um, times two um, stereo amplifier. Um, highly, highly regarded. It's an older unit that I think came out probably 03 or 04. And originally, I didn't. I got it like in 26, 2016 or 2017, somewhere around there. Um, but um, it lasted that long um, and was a stereophile rated A component. By the way, you know. Um, it, this is funny. I, it's not like I intended or planned for this, but you know, just it makes you feel a little bit better about your, you know, your choices and selections. Um, kind of one of the go-to, um, go-to references in the industry in terms of like kind of rating audio components is the Stereophile Guide. Every year they they have a rating of uh, A, you know, B, C, and C and such of the different components across different things domains. And, um, you know, it just so happens that all of my main components, the Oppo 205 Blu-ray player, the Marantz 8802, and then the Parasound uh, 821 amp were all stereophile class A rated um, for their time. You know, obviously the Marantz, again, has been replaced. The new model is also rated A, though. Um, the Oppo has, you know, been discontinued for years now. And this also has been replaced, too. They have an A21 Plus model. Um, that's also stereophile rated A. And so just again, just it just shows to quality. And again, I'm all about bang for buck. It's not the most expensive thing you can get, but it just speaks to the fact that, you know, these are highly regarded, well-received, well-reviewed, you know, and popular products that, 
um, you know, really going to deliver a world class uh, sound experience. So um, I'm happy. I'm happy with what everything I have. I mean, this doesn't happen overnight. This is literally me building up to this for 20 years now, just about. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm getting close to that end game. You know, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what pieces I think still, you know, I, I eventually will upgrade when I, you know, have the, the time and the money and the means. Um, but the next level of upgrade from where I'm at now is meant to be the last. Like, you know, I know that's, you know, some people like you never stop. And, you know, in some cases you don't like a TV is, is never, you know, that always kind of changes. The processor usually has a lot more changes as well. Although, again, both have been pre pretty stagnant. Um, the last five years or so, for sure, even ten years, I would say. But um, but yeah, definitely the speakers. Um, and then when you upgrade the speakers, and you know, the, the next upgrade is going to be, you know, again, pretty pretty high end audio file level. You kind of got to make sure that the rest of your system is up up to that level as well. So I will do that in terms of everything, the wiring, the cables, um, and then you know the amp and everything else. So, but that's all for now. You know, this is it, Thomas Home Theater, um, twenty years in the making. Um, <laughs> definitely great experience, very comfortable, you know, um, pretty much state of the art. And I think aesthetically pleasing, it has a, you know, pretty high WAF factor, wife acceptance factor. Um, I think she's generally pretty, pretty, um, accepting of, of how it looks, um, looks pretty clean. Um, so I did have them, um, wire when they built the house, the wire, the location for the speakers, which is why I was able to kind of get um, the speakers positioned with no wires visible. Um, so for the surrounds, um, and pretty much most things in the front, everything is kind of right behind the rack there. The TV as well, all the wires behind the TV built into the wall, right? You see the surrounds there. And then even the Atmos, those speaker, um, their shape is a little different. So I couldn't necessarily place it directly on the plate there, but there's just a couple of inches of, of wire hanging out there, which, you know, uh, it's fine. No one is going to notice unless I point it out to you like I'm doing, but um, that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty well hidden. So let me know what you think. Um, any, you know, components that you also own, any impressions you have, anything you think I should be looking to get uh, for the next level, for the next step? Um, any changes you think? Should I add rear, you know, acoustic panels here? Do you think that's necessary? Uh, ceiling panels, you know, any thoughts you have, let me know. And uh, that's it. So I'll definitely keep this video, you know, kind of archived because hopefully we'll see how this evolves over the next couple of years, especially in this back area here where it won't be kid land anymore. So True Techno Gamer here. Thanks again. Please like, subscribe, comment, let me know, pass the word, um, and look forward to the next video. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.